What's up everybody? My name is Michaelis and welcome to the first episode of Planetside. What is Planetside? Well, Planetside is basically a channel for motion designers by a motion designer, for VFX artists by a VFX artist, for animators by an animator. In this channel, we're going to explore After Effects, Cinema 4D, and a whole bunch of other... No, not a whole bunch of other programs, just After Effects and Cinema 4D. We're gonna hold it in those two. Uh, yeah, so for the first episode, we're going to explore our inner glow, our inner aura, you know? We're gonna bring that out, and uh, we're gonna do it just like this. So, for this effect, we're going to need three things, three simple things. The first thing that we're going to need is uh, a picture. Of course, you can use yourself or a friend or your girlfriend or mother, sister, brother. No recommend cousins because, you know, they suck. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> so, you can use any picture you want. And uh, the second thing we're going to need is a computer, of course, because we're going to do it on a computer and the third thing you'll need is uh, After Effects now if you don't have After Effects uh, I suggest you go over to Adobe site to the Adobe site and uh, download a free trial or buy it if you have the money and uh, if you don't have the money and you don't want a free trial you can always yeah we're not doing that maybe Anyways, uh, yeah, so uh, let's uh, jump into After Effects. Alright guys, we're here in After Effects. And the first thing we're going to do is import our picture. Do that by going to File, Import, and then File again, and then uh, select your picture. And then click on Import. I already imported my picture, but the other way you can do it is by double clicking in your projects panel and then uh, getting the picture from there. So we're going to take our picture and then drop it into a new composition. So we drag and drop it and uh, then we get this scene. Now what we're going to do basically is separate our subject so this guy from the background and the way that we're going to do this is by using a pen tool so the first thing I'm gonna do is duplicate our picture you can go to edit duplicate or control D on the keyboard we're gonna rename our duplicate subject and rename the bottom one BG for background oh. then we're going to take our pen tool and we're going to start masking out our subject So we start with the first point and then we start masking. Just gonna change the mask color here so I can uh, see it a bit better. There you go. Yeah, and uh, start masking. Now, masking is a pretty time consuming. Uh, way of uh, of se separating someone from uh, from 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 the background. So, I'm going to show you a different method in a minute. And uh, when using the mask tool, 
you can click and drag like this to uh, create a curve and uh, you can hold control and grab one of the handles and start manipulating the mask as needed so let me just readjust this here I'm gonna grab the other handle and uh, bring it all the way down, so like this, and uh, then we're gonna continue. Again, clicking and dragging, letting go, holding down control to bring the handle back, and. At this part, you can take your time. You can make the the mask as cleanly as you want. But as I mentioned before, I'm going to show you a better method of doing this. The reason I'm uh, using a mask instead of the second method is because some of you are working in older versions of After Effects. And uh, the second method uh, uses rotoscoping. And some of you might not have that in previous versions of After Effects. So that's why I'm using this masking method. So the ones with the older version can still uh, follow along. All right, so we're almost done here. And let me close that, turn off our background to see our final result. And yeah, there we have it. And as you can see, if I zoom in on his hair, let me just feather, oh yeah, Press F for uh, to feather the edges, so we can get a little idea, and it blends better. And feather amount down to say about five. And then we're gonna go into our effects and presets and uh, type in simple choker. What you can do is, uh, oops, uh, select your uh, subject, go to, where are you, mat, and simple choker, and apply that, and slightly, just ever so slightly, try and choke, choke the, the edges of, of your mask, and, uh, and we have, yeah this as you can see it's not that clean and uh, we can do it better so what we're gonna do is call this subject mask because we used a mask for it we're gonna duplicate it duplicate give it a different color like orange and we're gonna rename this subject roto because so, we're going to rotoscope this one. So delete the mask. Uh, turn, let's see. Yeah, turn off the mask one. Select the rotor layer. And what we're going to do is, is double click on it. It's going to bring us into this view. And in this view, we can make use of the rotor brush. So we're going to select that. And how this works is you basically paint out your subject with the roto brush. So let me show you. If we start painting here, you can see it selects what we've painted and leaves out everything we haven't. So if we go back, let me refresh this 
grab our roto brush again and we start painting out our subject you can see this is a a quicker method and uh, a lot faster than just using the pen tool and then going along the edge and starting to you know yeah and this is a much cleaner uh, cleaner mask as you can see it's uh, pretty intuitive it kind of has uh, already has an idea of what you're trying to separate and because our background is pretty flat it can uh it it knows what we're trying to separate so we're going to start painting like so and the reason why i love using the roto roto brush is because of the second tool that we're going to get into a little bit later after we're done painting them out. So once you're done, let me just zoom in here. Forgot his ear. Yeah, and still hairs. Now don't worry about the 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 transparency of the hairs because we're going to fix that in a minute. So just make sure you get most of it, but don't worry if you don't get all of it. And that's what our mask looks like. And as you can see, if we zoom in here, you see that the background, it, it's still there. But we're going to fix that. Let me just zoom in here. And uh, if you hold down Alt, you can, let me just readjust my brush size. If you hold down Alt, you can paint out pieces you've missed. So holding down Alt gets rid of any mistakes that you've made and want to correct. If you want to readjust the brush size, just uh, hold down control and click and drag. All right, I'm happy with that. All right, looks good. Okay, now we're going to go to our Refine Edge tool. This is a tool that we're going to use. Now, what this tool basically is, is a sort of hair. Uh, it's pretty hard to explain, but it basically gets rid of any unwanted background that you may have accidentally taken into uh in, into your mask see so it's basically going to pick up everything that the roller brush couldn't and uh, that's why it's uh such a powerful tool as you can see here if we keep painting just paint along the edge Try and get all the little hairs that you missed. Just keep painting. Zooming in just to make sure we don't miss anything. Uh, there we go. Especially the little hairs on top, as you can see. Those are pretty hard, so we're going to take those with us. And come down. Just keep painting the edges. 
and yeah we're done so let me show you what that looks like and as you can see improvement immediately immediately you can, you can see that the background it isn't fully gone you can still see a little haze there but for the most part it's better than our mask version so as you can see the mask still has some of the background and uh, the roto version as you can see it's almost actually yeah it's pretty gone it's gone so uh, what we're gonna do now is we're gonna turn on our subject mask layer we're gonna rename this shirt Now we're going to delete the mask and put it on top of our subject roto. Give it a cyan color so we can keep track of it. And what we're going to do is basically mask out his shirt because that's where our glow effect is going to live. So we're going to start oops with our layer selected we're gonna start masking with our shirt layer selected we're gonna start masking the, the shirt okay after we're done cutting out our shirt you should have this And what we're going to do is we are going to rename this layer, the shirt layer. So with the shirt uh, layer selected, we're gonna press on shirt, we're gonna type in noise, and we're gonna add a noise to this shirt layer. So if you go to your effects and presets, type in fractal noise and put that on the shirt if you can't find it in your effects and presets you can also select your with your layer selected go to effects noise and grain that should be there for fractal noise right there all right, let's turn our fractal noise back on. And what we're going to do here with the noise, if we go to fractal type, you can see that we get these different looks. Now, all these looks are dependent on your taste of how the glow effect is going to look. Yeah, basically. So, I'm going to go for dynamic twist because that one works better for me, but you can, oh, before we go on, let me just select, turn off our noise layer, select the rotor layer, go to pre-compose, move all the attributes, call it roto, click OK. As you can see, our background just reappears, but we're gonna fix that. Just right click and go to time. And at the beginning of the key, uh, timeline, go to freeze frame. Now with our noise selected again, we're gonna adjust some of these settings. So, I'm going to pre-compose this gonna delete the noise and we're gonna pre-compose this and turn it to green and this one to orange and we're gonna type in again we're gonna put the fractal noise for it 
we're going to go to basic fractal type dynamic twist yeah so let's adjust some of these settings to see the effect working if we go to contrast you can see put that bring down the brightness something like negative 17 if you go to scale bring that up the rotation 200 let's see let's try 140 143 because I want the edge of this to be glowing so everything that's black will be keyed out and everything that's white will be glowing so if we go to subscaling we can adjust this and you can see we get some different types of looks I like like something in the middle I like this and if we change the rotation you can see that it changes the way the fractal behaves so I think I like this one it's a little bit fiery and if we alt click on the evolution and we type in time star symbol or shift 8 100 and then click away and we press play on our timeline you can see that our noise is animated so you see this pretty cool like fiery effect so yeah that's how we get the that so what we're going to do now is a solo let's see change the transfer mode to add turn on our background let's start seeing how this glow is going to affect our shirt layer So we're going to go to our effects and presets and type in hue and then select hue and saturation and drop it on to our uh, noise layer. So if we come down here and click on colorize, you can see that we get some color into our glow but we're going to try and find a yellowish fiery orange color so if you come down to color colorize saturation you can bring up the saturation and uh, basically gives you more more color a more vibrant color so if you play with this and try and get a look that we like, kind of like this one. Let me see. Yeah, this looks pretty cool. Yeah, just a little less. Check the other colors. I like this one better, so I'm gonna go with this one. See how that looks. All right, cool. Now what we're going to do is duplicate 
our noise layer and delete the fractal noise and the hue and saturation. We're gonna change the transfer mode to normal. So it's basically just our shirt layer. And we're gonna type in invert. Actually, no, scratch that. We're not gonna do this. We're going to type tint. That's the one we need. Tint. And what it does is basically tints it black and white. And we're going to go back to our effects and presets and type in curves. Now, we're going to lower, bring in some contrast to our shirt layer. So we're basically making it darker. What we're basically doing is making a shirt mm, displacement map. So if we rename this shirt displace, we can use this layer, let me change the color here to blue. We can use this layer as a displacement map for our glow. So it isn't so flat, flat on the surface. So if we come to our effects and presets and type in displacement map, you can see it there double click and put it to our shirt noise. Let me just turn this off. Put it below, let's put it below our, put the, the, the displacement map below our noise layer. I'm just changing the color here, just so it isn't so, so black. I'll give it a more interesting color. Let's see, I think a dark blue could work like a navy blue not too bright uh, so I really like the color com co uh, color combo of uh, teal and orange so I'm gonna go with this teal color and bring the orange in some more Just, I'm just trying to get the right look, you know? You don't have to do this. You can uh, skip this step, but I'm, I'm somewhat of a perfectionist when it comes to this, especially colors. Pretty indecisive, but uh, here we go. Something a little darker like this. Okay, perfect. Just readjust the curves to make it that dark. All right, let's go with this for now. All right, so what we're going to do is take our noise layer and put a displacement map on it. So double click. Then we're going to come to displacement map layer so our displacement lat layer, and we're gonna select it. So shirt displace. And right away you can see we're getting some interesting effects here happening. So if I turn it on and off, you can see it's displacing along the pattern of the displacement map that we made. So now you see we have this very interesting displacement effect happening. It kind of looks like the fire is living in the clothes instead of on top of it. So yeah, that's how you get that. And let's play around with the f scaling to see if we can get some other interesting effects. You can basically take as much time as you want trying to get uh, the look you're looking for, but I'm just gonna okay, so we're gonna come to our effects and presets and type in glow with our 
noise layer selector we're going to drop that you can find this under stylize glow it's right there with our glow selected we're gonna bring the threshold down to up something like this maybe 100 no. um, intensity down intensity up and threshold something like 91 and the glow radius to something like 51 yeah and uh yeah i kind of like the way this looks it's resembling fire all right we're gonna stop the tutorial here because uh it's getting pretty long but uh i'm going to be posting a part two of uh this so you, in the next part, we're going to be looking at putting a glow on his nose ring and bringing in the lines that you saw floating around his face in the example. So uh, I'll see you guys in the next one.